Director Lather is absent, and President Christensen. Here. Here. All righty. Uh, we don't have a public hearing tonight, and uh, so we're on item three, which is the board member's opportunity to remove items from the consent agenda, if you wish. Anything? I just have, there's one small typo that I don't think is worth pulling, and I'm trying to find that right now. But um, I saw one, too, and I just want to get that right now. I have it marked. <laughs> but, and, oh, and I also had a question. So the management update, um, which is 4.5, um, there was a description under the Water Resources Committee about uh, advanced clean fleet regulations, so maybe sometime in the future they can explain what that involves, like where our fleet is going and with electric vehicles and so forth. It doesn't have to be tonight. Um, also, there was a mention under operation and maintenance about the sanitary survey of the water system um, and like it was um, their fourth bullet. Um, and a deficiency list of items that need to be addressed. I'd like some time and update on that. And then the hexavalent one, where was that? It was just one silly typo. On, if you look on page 33 of 38 of the entire packet, it's page three of five of the letter, and it's under comment 1C, fifth line, it says, has acknowledges, it should be a D instead of an S at the end of that. Okay. Well, that was it. <laughs> Sorry, I just didn't want a letter going it's out. It's been through a lot of eyes, but thanks. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that, that's all. I I'm, don't have anything to really pull, but it, just those for future um, updates on those two I requested. And I just had a comment to make, nothing to pull, but just on the... The production, so that's, uh, let's see, page 25 of 38. Um, the This year's and last year's uh, July production are, are almost exactly the same, but there's a slope coming from June to July on this year, whereas last year was not as much of a slope. So. I wonder whether or not our water use is going to increase in August. Time will tell. Yeah. Okay, and I just wanted to compliment the letter on the very timely letter on the hexavalent problem. Hexavalent problem. Yes, and and Taj uh, yeah. was the author of that. So. Yeah. Nice letter. Okay. So if. That's Make the motion. Oh, wait, public, public comment. comment. Yeah. Okay. I'll make the motion to approve the consent agenda. Second it. I will second it. And, and and she have to say something about yeah, the minutes. Um, you want to recusal for the yes for the minutes. So yeah, okay, recusal for the three. There are three different minutes. That'd be during her vote, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, Director Balboni, just recommend that when you vote, um, you just indicate your abstention from uh, 4.1, please. Okay. Should I do that right now? When we vote. Okay. You can do that when we, we, we do the vote. Thank you. Director Balboni. I vote um, yes, except for I will recuse myself from the minutes since I was not here. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President Jaffe. Yes. Director LeHue. Yes. And President Christensen. Yes. All right. Uh, oral and written communications. Does anyone from the public wish to speak at this time on an item that's not on the, the agenda? Any comments from the board? I do have a few. Okay. Please. Okay. So I'm still trying to learn how to use the iPad properly. But I think I can remember what I was going to say. Um, 
the first thing is is that NOAA's come out with a report or a forecast for El Nino to be very strong and average or above average for the winter for this area. It's, um, as I recall, something like 82 to mid 90 percent certainty on that. So we'll see what happens, but more rain is good. That's the first thing. The second thing is on the production reports, um, and this might already be happening, so let me know if it is, but on the production reports, um, the old style report where there was a weather index, that it occurs every quarter, is that it? Or is that not in the, what did we, what'd we come to on that? I can't remember exactly where we landed. I know we were trying to eliminate things that maybe no longer serve the board, but we can bring it back. It's just a little bit of effort balancing that, how often you think you might want it, but any time. Well, it, when I saw the increase in the slope from May to June, I was going, I wonder what the weather was like during that time. And so it does, and I, I think that the current farm or the root of the production is is good, perhaps better for finance because it's it's clearer on that and how things have changed. But for in terms of what's causing the change, it's doesn't give any indication. So I'd like to see the old graph. The old graph every so often it doesn't have to be every time. And if you'd like that in the form of a motion, I can make it in the form of a motion or? Uh, you can if you if you want. Also, uh, in addition to that, because of the large drop, we, uh, Water Resources is looking into what is that? Is it, are other agencies experiencing that same delta and drop in usage? Mm -hmm. Trying to understand it better, uh, whether it's weather uh, driven or mass media or whatever. But we oh, certainly yeah. can bring back the uh, weather. In yeah, you, you might want to look into change in, in land use. At least in my neighborhood, there are not that many lawns left. Right. And it would be a great project for an uh, undergrad somewhere who's into GIS to, act, or maybe it's already been done, to look at how the, you know, how many parcels back I don't know the right time frame, but sometime in the past, were had lawns and now they're low, low use plants or right. whatever. And we're certainly. I don't want to. I know it's we're not on the on the agenda topic, but um, certainly you can see that in the bell shaped curve we used to have, where the big bell was the summer months and the usage would go way way up, and that has flattened out. So that's that's certainly an indication of that, but. What I hear you asking is um, uh, for staff to do the do the weather index occasionally. That's that's the first ask, yeah. And occasionally, maybe quarterly. Don't want to burden staff, but I do find it useful. Well, there are a couple of ways to look at that in a way. Um, that this year was definitely influenced by heavy rainfall, don't you think, and cool weather. It didn't even begin to warm up until July, but the larger pattern was is also below ex, uh, water consumption is or production is below expected during drought years, and that's in a way. Uh, you have a better memory than I do of weather conditions <laughs> because if it's not on that on that plot, oh, okay. the weather <laughs> index plot really does. Fact. I didn't start watering my yard, and that's just it, you know what's left of what's left of it until. July. But I, I think I think you are correct. I think we're going to see that. But also, I know um, just the fog itself, when I was doing these numbers, it, it had like a 15% decrease in water usage impact, you know. So uh, that weather part does play a significant role yeah. in the outdoor water use. And then one more thing, since today's packet was not as large as most, 
I started thinking about um, the rates and what information would be useful for the rates. And I went back to Sue Holt's analyses. She did that for 2011, 2012, where instead of just giving mean numbers, she actually showed the total distribution. So, um, and it, it was very helpful for me in formulating my thoughts about water use, who's using it, when are they using it. But that hasn't been done recently. And I like to see an update on that. And I will make that as a motion to see if other directors I don't know think it's that on oral communication. Yeah, and there, um, there's no need for a motion on this. I think we can just um, you know, provide a request to, to staff and then um, it can be brought back, uh, Ron, whenever he feels appropriate, consistent with the board's kind of direction. Well, I did, I did look and I had asked for an update before and it was, it said that, you know, in the minutes that it, it was um, going to be brought back as part of the rate analysis, but it really wasn't. It, it was, it, it wasn't as an in-depth analysis as, as Sue Holt did. And there's a few graphs in there. So I actually, Maybe a starting point would be just for Jennifer and and I guess for Carla and Rochelle too, just to show some of the graphs that we were presented back before they were on the board, showing about water use and and uh, see you know where to go from there. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna see if we can dig those up. That's, were they presented in a board packet? I know we looked at them and I really yeah, there was a, okay, right. there was one and. I can send it to you because I. I'll start if you get. I, I remember I I worked with Sue on that. So um, it was uh, April sixteenth, two thousand thirteen, agenda item not uh, five point two, and it had a whole series of graphs. So that's what I've got. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, for, you know, a couple of things kind of came together and I had been reading about the initial regulations for direct potable reuse being put out there, just which is interesting. You know, they're up, the draft regs are out and are available for public comment. And then I happened to be listening to marketplace on my way over here <laughs> and, and they had a little um, story about, a brewery in San Carlos that was using purified water to make beer. And, you know, some good things in the article, like where he's, he mentioned purified water is purer than what they get from a lot of other places, but then they kept using terms like gray water and things that I'm like, ah, just, you know, incorrect, like details. You know? <laughs> so um, it was just, it's at least people are thinking about it, you know, I know years ago they had a contest down in San Diego for, for beer making with purified water. It's funny you mentioned that because I was <laughs> right on the way on the way here. The NPR had that was the story I was talking about. You're talking about that, yeah. yeah. There's legislation to make it legal. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, one of the things this uh, man from um, Arizona, in, in conjunction to that, um, he got he rented. Or least a big semi, the, uh, the water purification, water purification inside the van in the semi, and then the output was beer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, things are changing. Yeah. Anyway, so that's really great. Okay, so uh, is that anything for me? Okay, uh, we'll move on to item six, uh, oral report. From uh, District Council. Thanks, uh, President Christensen. Yeah, just one item I wanted to mention this evening, um, and it relates to a, a case law that came down relatively recently involving um, East Bay uh, Municipal Utility District. Um, in that that case, involved a challenge um, to their utility rates, um, and you know the the takeaway from the case was a special 120-day statute of limitations, which is unique to municipal utility districts, um, uh, applied to really any challenge to those rates. Um, 
this is really important because historically uh, there has been a, um, a determination um, that generally um, the statute of limitations to challenge utility rates arises each time they're imposed so that it's sort of a rolling continue statute of limitations um, and any limitations period is really focused on the amount that can be um, sought in a refund action. Um, this case clarified that that 120 day period, which was unique to East Bay Mud, um, applies from the date the rates are adoption, ad adopted, excuse me, and prevents any further challenge. Um, the reason I'm bringing it up to um, for us is you may remember there was legislation which was um, put forward by Aqua and others, uh, which um, adopted a very similar 120 day statute of limitations for all water and wastewater um, rates adopted by local agencies, provided that the agency um, includes notice of the statute of limitations in its 218 notice. Um, as we move forward with uh, our, our proposed rate increase, uh, we'll make sure that that similar language, you know, is included in that notice. And, um, you know, applying the logic of this case, East Bay Mud, um, it would create a hard 120-day statute of limitations for challenges to our, our rates. Um, it's a really important win um, for local agencies, and I think uh, uh, also reflective of the importance of making sure that we're participating as a group in the legislative process. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Great. Thanks, Josh. And President Christensen, I, I, I'm not sure we um, did item five. There's anybody had any oral comment not on the agenda? We just, that's what we did. Oh, you before changed. we, before. Thank you. Uh, we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, item seven, administrative business. Uh, Additional and unconditional will serves none. But item 7.2 is the oath of office for Director Balboni. <laughs> Thanks, uh, President Christensen. And I have the a privilege, a privilege of administering the oath. And just for members of the public that may be watching, this is um, what we like to do. It's a ceremonial oath of office, but Director Balboni was officially sworn in prior to the meeting. Um, so, um, Director Balboni, if you're ready, we can uh, we can begin. I'm ready. Uh, can you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? Um, I, please state your name. I, Jennifer Balboni. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. To the Constitution of the United States and to the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or with, purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. And I will well and faithfully embark upon the... Discharge the duties upon which I'm about to enter. So. <laughs> discharge the duties that I am about to embark upon. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Majority of those. Um, that concludes our uh, our meeting, the public part of the meeting. And we, so we will adjourn now to a closed session.